Now that we have the centroid of a shape, we're going to find the x-x moment of inertia. The moment of inertia about the x-x axis is the moment of inertia of a line that's drawn through the centroid. Okay, So parallel to the x-axis. And in order to do this, we need to um, find moment of inertia of the individual parts, part one, and then part two, about their own centroids here and here. And then we need to find the influence that each shape has about the centroid of the entire shape here. And we do that by using this equation. The moment of inertia xx is equal to the sum of each part's xx moment of inertia plus the sum of each part's area times the square of the distance y prime. The distance y prime is defined as the distance y prime is defined as the distance in the vertical direction from each part's centroid. So this would be y prime of part one to the centroid of the primary shape, of the entire complex shape. So we're no longer looking at the reference point down in the corner here. Okay. And in order to do this, it's good to have a table again. So let me bring up a table. So as you recall from our original shape, our centroid here was a distance 4.02 over and a distance up of 3.80 inches. So let's look at our two parts. First of all we have our rectangle, part one, and what we need is the moment of inertia of part one about its own centroid here. Moment of inertia of a rectangle is equal to 1 12 base height cubed. So in this case it's 1 12 times 4 inches times 9 inches squared and when you do the math on that you get 243 inches to the fourth. So moment inertia has units of inches to the fourth and we get 243. Now for part two, which is a triangle, the moment of inertia of a triangle about its centroid right here would be 136 base height cubed is 1 over 36 times 7 inches times 9 inches cubed and that gives us 141.75 inches to the fourth. So 141.75. The area of part one again is 36, 9 times 4, and that would be inches squared. And part two was 31.5. That's one half base times height. Now we need to come up with y bar. Well again, the the centroid of the rectangle, the centroid of the rectangle is up 4.5 inches. So that means y bar, that means y bar for part one is going to equal 4.5 inches minus 3.8 inches, which is equal to 0.7 inches. For part 2, y bar 2 is equal to, again remember this was up, 3 inches is equal to 3 inches minus 3.8 inches is minus 0.8 inches. So minus 0.8 inches. Because we're squaring y, y prime, it um, the negative sign will go away. So when you take 36 times 0.7 squared, you get 
17.64, and this would be going to be inches to the fourth. Again, y was in inches. And 31.5 times negative 0.8 squared is 20.16. At this point, we have all the parts that we need. We need to sum up the ix axis, and we need to sum up the product of ay squared. So when we sum up this column here, we get 243 plus 141.75, and that gives us 384.75 inches to the fourth. And we sum up the final column, 17.64 plus 20.16, and we get 37.8 inches to the fourth. So plugging that into our equation, ix axis is equal to sum of ix x plus the sum of a y prime squared, we get 384.75 plus 37.8. Sum them up, we get i x x is equal to 422.55 inches to the fourth. So what we see here is the offset of the shapes, individual shapes, one and two, the offset of their centroids from the centroid of the composite shape contributes an additional 37.8 inches to the fourth of the moment of inertia. So we can't just add the moment of inertia of each piece together. So the sum of the parts is actually larger. Now, if we wanted to find the moment of inertia y, y, we would take a line vertical through our centroid, and we would have to calculate the, the i, y, y of each part about its vertical centroid, and then take the horizontal distances. And what we would end up with is i, y, y is the sum of each i, y, y plus the sum of a x primed squared, where x prime then is the horizontal distance between each centroid and the centroid of the composite shape.